In today's ThingScript tutorial, I'll show you how to build your very own moving average clouds indicator. Now as part of this tutorial, there's three main things that you'll learn. The first is how to use dynamic moving average inputs. You'll be able to learn how to not only code, but do things like change the moving average type directly from the studies menu and have this directly interact with the code where the user has full control over each of the two lines. You can change not only the length, but also things like if you want one to be a simple moving average and another to be exponential and have the indicator automatically update for you. Now the second thing that you'll learn in this tutorial is how to use the add cloud function. The add cloud function is a lesser used function inside of thinkorswim, but it's what allows us to do things like paint the clouds right here inside of the two moving averages. You'll learn how to interact with this function, how to use it, and by the end of this video, you'll be able to create your own indicators with the add cloud function. And finally, you'll learn how to change the moving average lines color based on the actual trend. Now, traditionally, we use the set default color to change the color of our indicators. In the case of this particular example, we won't be able to use the set default color. We'll have to use a different method, which allows us to bypass some of the thinkorswim restrictions. And you'll see how we do that when we get to that portion. So these are the three things that you'll learn in today's tutorial. If you're a beginner to ThinkScript, this tutorial is perfect for you and we'll walk you through some of the key concepts and allow you to build a very simple but useful indicator inside of your platform. Now to get started, let's come inside of our platform. I'm going to remove the indicator that I already have. If you're already on the default screen, just click the studies icon right here and then click create to start writing your own code. Now to get started, let's give our study a name. I'll call mine TI underscore moving average clouds and I'll remove all of the code that's inside of here. Now let's start with something basic like hard coding the eight period exponential moving average. Now I wanna see that on my chart, so I'll use the plot variable type and I'll say plot EMA eight is equal to, and I'll use the exponential average function here, which takes in two inputs, the price, so I'll use the closing price and then the length, which I'll use eight as our value for the EMA eight. Now, if I click OK and apply, you should notice we have an eight period exponential line that's drawn on our charts. Now, let's use this as our starting point to start to pull out a few things that we can let the user change directly from the study settings menu. Now, the two things that we hard coded here were the close price type and the length, which was eight. So let's pull out each of those. I'll say input price is equal to price is equal to close. And then we'll say input and I'll say fast MA length is equal to eight. And I'm going to plug each of these values right inside of here. Now, if I click apply, you should notice nothing changes on our chart. We still have the same line, but now if I double click, we can all of a sudden change this line directly from the study settings menu. We don't need to go inside of the code. So say instead of an eight EMA, I wanted to see a 21, I can change the value here, click OK, click apply, and you'll notice that line automatically adjusted. Now I can also change the price type that's used, and you'll notice that we said close, but thinkorswim has automatically given us uh, some options here that we can pick and choose from. This is a neat little thing that thinkorswim makes available to you. All we did is define close and thinkorswim is then telling you all of the options that you can pick and choose from. Now, just like that option is available for the price type, that option is also available for the moving average type. So I'll say fast MA type here and let's start by specifying the exponential moving average type. So I wrote average type dot and we're specifying the exponential moving average. Now, before we use it, if I click apply and OK, and now we double click our study, You'll notice we have all of the different moving average types available here for us to pick and choose from. So the simple, the exponential, the weighted, the wilders, and the hull. Now let's click OK. Let's come back inside of our code. And instead of now defining this as an EMA 8 where we're specifically saying this is an exponential moving average, let's adapt this so it instead uses this value right here that we defined for the user to select which moving average type to use. 
So instead of the exponential average function, I'll use the moving average function instead. And the moving average function takes in three inputs. The first input is the moving average type. So there I can say fast MA type. The second input is the price. So we're going to use the closing price, but the user can select that. And the third input is the length, which we have defined right up here. Now, if I click apply, we truly have a dynamic moving average. The user can select, say, a simple moving average here, change this length to 50, click OK, click apply, and this automatically updates. If instead of the closing price, you want to use the open price, you can select the open. That will automatically update for you. You truly have flexibility in terms of the moving average and the length and the type that you'd like to use. Now let's redefine this variable here. Instead of EMA8, I'm going to say fast MA. And let's go ahead and copy this and paste this in one more time, but this time for our slow moving average type. Now we'll need to create a whole new set of variables here for the slow length and the slow moving average type. So I'm going to copy paste the length and I'm going to copy paste the type and change each of those values to slow so that we now have new variables here. I also want to plug each of these values into our actual moving average for the slow moving average and update that from the fast moving average type. So I'll say slow MA type here and slow MA length. Now I'm using the same price here, but in case you wanted to break that out, you would follow something similar saying fast price and then slow price and plug each of those two values here. Now I also want to bring this price value down so that it appears at the bottom of the user settings that the user selects from. Now if I click apply and OK, you'll notice we have two lines now drawn on our chart. The first line is that 50 simple, so let's update this to instead be the 8 exponential. And for our slow moving average, let's say the 21 exponential, click OK, click apply. And now we have two lines drawn on our charts the 8 exponential and the 21 exponential, both of which you can change directly from the study settings menu. Now the next thing we can start to explore is how to change this line's color. You'll notice thinkorswim by default has given that fast MA line the cyan color and the slow MA line the pink color. Let's go ahead and update each of those. And here, let's start by first hard coding this and we'll say set default color. And instead of cyan, I want to change this to green for the fast moving average type. I'll click apply and you'll notice that our fast moving average type now has changed to the color of green. Now what happens if we want to make this a little bit smarter in terms of its coloring? Say I want to make the fast moving average type only green if it's above the slow moving average type. So let's try and include that here. I'll say if fast MA is greater than slow MA, meaning it's above it, then we're going to use the color.green, else we're going to use color.red. Now you'll notice we don't have an error plotting directly here like we normally would, say if I missed a semicolon. So we don't get the red highlighting. However, if we look down here on our error panel, you can see we have an error which says cannot access the dynamic value for initialization of the set default color function. We need to instead use the assign value color function here in order for this to work. So that's one thing to call out when you're trying to change the moving average types color. You need to use the assign value color function. If you want to hard code it, you can get away with the set default color. Otherwise, use the assign value color function. Now if I click OK and apply, You'll notice that this line is green when it's above our slower moving average type, and this line goes red when it's below that slower moving average type. Now let's apply the same conditional formatting to our slow MA. So here I'll say slow MA, and we'll give this the same exact formatting since we want these two lines to be the same color so that when we draw our clouds inside of here, it looks nice and clean. So here's what we have so far. The user can pick and choose the fast and slow moving average type and length along with the price, and that will change each of the two lines on our chart. Now the last thing we have left is to color the space in between these two lines. Now to do that, we're going to be using the addCloud function. Now if I start by writing addCloud, 
The add cloud function takes in a few different inputs, and I think you'll be clear what those inputs are as we go through them. Now, the first two sets of inputs are the two sets of data points where the cloud is drawn in between. So I'm going to say fast MA and slow MA. Now, by default, we will have the check with the add cloud function checking if the fast MA is greater than the slow MA. This is built inside of Thinkorswim and how the add cloud function will operate. It compares this first variable to the second variable, comparing what the color is. If this first variable is greater than the second variable, then we want the color of green. And if this first variable is less than the second variable, then we want our secondary color, which is color dot red. And there you have it. We have our finished product of the indicator. We have two moving average lines, which the user can change directly from the study settings menu. If instead of the eight and the 21 exponential, maybe we wanted to see the 20 and say the 50 simple moving averages instead, we could just change that right here. And automatically we will have not only the clouds update for us, but also the moving average lines. These lines and the clouds will allow you to spot when you're in a downtrend, along with when that trend switches to an uptrend. You can also use things like the three and the eight EMA to get really granular in terms of momentum and spot when that momentum is riding and switching and ride that momentum all the way up until it actually reverses and switches. There's a lot of little things that hopefully this one simple indicator allows you to observe, pull patterns out of and use as part of your broader trading strategy. Now let's quickly recap everything that we covered in today's tutorial. You learned how to make a truly dynamic moving average. Instead of hard coding the moving average, we used a moving average function and we allowed the user to select things like what price are we using? What moving average type are we using? And what is our length? You also learned how to change the moving average lines color and the difference between the assign value color function and the set default color function. And finally, you learned how to use the add cloud function. Remember the add cloud function has two data types that we can plug in here. If this first variable is greater than the second variable, then this color scheme will be used the third parameter. If this first variable is less than the second variable, then the second color scheme will be used, which is in our case, color dot red. And that's how we're able to control where these clouds are drawn. I hope you found today's ThinkScript tutorial useful for your trading. If you'd like to find other tutorials, you can do so on our website, tosindicators.com slash learn. And there, if you scroll down, you'll find both free and pro tutorials, which allow you to get better at your ThinkScript skills. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in our next update.